All right, today we're going to talk about some tips to help you with your CPU and RAM usage while you're mixing. If you've ever had a project slowing down or skipping on you, and maybe you're unable to use some of your favorite dynamic EQs or reverbs in more than one instance because your computer's just having a hard time with it, there are some simple, easy things that you can do that work in any DAW to help minimize that effect. That way you can get the most out of using all the plugins that you want and take the strain off of your computer if it's slowing down your mixing process. So let's get into it. Now the first thing you can do is make sure that your computer has proper airflow. So if you have a tower with a fan that's backed up against the wall, make sure you pull it out and get yourself plenty of airflow so the fan can breathe properly. Because any increase in temperature will actually slow down your computer a little bit as well. With that out of the way, let's hop into the DAW and take a look at some other things that you can do. Now some effects obviously take up way more CPU usage than others and reverbs are a big one. So one of the things you can do is to use auxiliary send tracks for your reverb and have your whole project share a reverb. My channel strip here on the right says verb and I have a couple different reverbs in here and some tape emulation and a delay. So that simple trick right there alone will save your CPU a whole bunch. If things are going slow with more than one or two reverbs going, then pull them off of the channel strips and just use an auxiliary send track because the more reverbs you have going, the more it's gonna down your CPU. And the next big important thing is your buffer size. Now every DAW will allow you to adjust your buffer size. So here in Studio One it says device block size and you get to pick how many samples you're running. This is important to check anyway because you might not want to be operating on the default setting. But a good tip is if you're recording to try to run with 128 samples or less and see if that works smoothly. If it does, great. Don't go any bigger than that when you're recording. But when you're mixing, you can raise that number Number, maybe as high as 1024 or 2048, you will get more latency with the higher buffer size while you're mixing, but it will take the edge off of your CPU and you'll be able to process a lot more of your effects and inserts this way. Now the other things that are really helpful that every DAW will do is some form of rendering, freezing, or bouncing. Now different DAWs might have different terms for this, like you may have to Google how to freeze in FL Studio or how to bounce in Cubase or whatever it is, but definitely look up those three terms. Rendering, which can also be called printing, freezing, and bouncing. These are all different ways for consolidating effects on your tracks to get the most out of your CPU. So up here in blue, this is the organ track on this song. So let's say I wanna use Nova to do some dynamic EQ work on this thing. Nova can be pretty taxing on your CPU. Even compressors and saturators and things like that can take their toll on your CPU. Now this is another thing that you're gonna wanna look up in your DAW, but like in Studio One, for example, if I right click on the track, what I have down here, it says transform to rendered audio. For Studio One, this is the same as freeze, and we're gonna start with freeze and explain that. When you freeze a track, what it's going to do is basically going to mix the track down with all of the effects that you have set. So if I use some dynamic EQ, and let's say these are the settings that I wanna go with, to keep it from eating up my CPU, what you'll do is freeze the track. So now when I'm mixing, everything that I had on the organ has already been rendered, so it's not taxing the CPU anymore. And at any point, if I wanna go back and adjust that EQ, you could just unfreeze it. And so now my original information is back, my effects come back, and I can go in and adjust this EQ or compressor or whatever it is that I'm doing, and then I can go back and freeze the track again once I make the adjustments I wanna make. And it'll render those down and all of those effects are no longer taxing my CPU. Most DAWs will call that the freeze function, and that is fantastic. As the mix gets bigger and bigger and you're using more and more plugins, when you get a sound that you kind of like, just go ahead and freeze your track and then keep working. And if you need to go back and adjust any of those effects, just unfreeze it, make some adjustments, and freeze it again. It takes a few extra seconds to freeze the tracks, but it's totally worth it to be able to use all of those effects. 
And now for bouncing, bouncing is different in the sense that what it's referring to is non-effects-based processing. Your DAW probably has a couple different options, like here I can bounce to a new track or I can bounce a selection. So if you have a lot of volume automation or fade-ins and fade-outs, and the biggest one for bouncing is time stretching. If your project is using a lot of time stretching where you're speeding up or slowing down the tempo, once you're happy with that, you can bounce your tracks down and then your computer will not have to process that time stretching every time you're playing through while you're mixing. So definitely utilize the bounce feature in your DAW if you're doing a lot of volume automation or fade-ins and fade-outs or time stretching. And then there is rendering, which can also be called printing. When we print a track, it's similar to freezing it, but the difference between render and freeze is that you can't unrender the track. So if I render down this guitar track, all of the effects that are on it are printed to a new track, then what your DAW will do is leave the original track muted, at which point you can just click and hide the track. And this is a little better than freezing in some cases because when you render it down, you can see the new waveform. And then you can compare your new waveform to your old one. So if you've done compression or clipping work and you render it down, then you can visually look at the waveform and see the difference. Differences. With rendering, you can't unrender it, but you always have that original that's muted. So if you want to go back and redo some things, you just go back to the original track that is muted and move forward from there. And each DAW is different here, whether you're rendering, bouncing, mixing down, freezing. Look all of those terms up in your DAW and see what your options are. Some DAWs have options where you can even render down the effects that are on the auxiliary send tracks that this is using. And one of the best uses for rendering is with Melodyne. Melodyne can be a real drag on your CPU. It's an incredible tool though, if you don't have it, I highly recommend it. Melodyne is super powerful, but you don't want it running in the background, so if you use it to tune some vocals, once you have them where you want, you can render that track down or print it, so every time you play through your mix, Melodyne isn't running in the background and doing all of that calculation. And rendering is also really useful for hardware. For example, if you have a nice hardware compressor that you like, you can render down the compressed track and free up your hardware compressor to then go use on other things. And rendering down or printing tracks is also really useful on MIDI instruments that are taxing your RAM. If you have a complex MIDI synth that's doing a bunch of intricate stuff, your RAM is gonna be taxed by constantly calculating the MIDI. And if you render it down, then all that memory is freed up for your computer to run more smoothly. And then if you need to go back, you go back to the original track and move forward again from there. But make sure your computer's got plenty of room to breathe so the fan can keep it cool. Be sure to use auxiliary sends for effects that are really taxing on your CPU like reverbs and just share the reverbs with all of your tracks. Use that smaller buffer size for recording and then try using a larger buffer size for mixing. And then take a few minutes to look up those terms in your DAW. Look up bouncing, rendering, and freezing. All of those are super useful, they're really easy to do, and they can really free up your computer so you can use lots more instances of those effects that you love, because there's nothing worse than mixing with your computer glitching and slowing down and stopping. So if you haven't looked into those options, be sure to look them up and how to do them in your DAW, because it's a real quick, easy search result, and you'll thank yourself. It's gonna speed your workflow up like crazy, and it's gonna make it so you can use more and more of those favorite effects that you have. But there you go, I hope all that helps. Let me know what you think in the comments and I'll catch you on the next one.